we'll discuss today, recapitalization of the Nigerian banking system. What should key sectors expect? And we need to have this conversation. It's Mr. Johnson Chuku, Group Managing Director, Carry Asset Management. It's been a strong voice about recapitalization. And the last time we had this exercise was 2004 to 2005. But this is for the next two years. What should we expect and how will this shape the economy? The conversation continues. And it's great to have you on the show, Mr. Johnson Chuku. Thank you for having me. Good day. Yes, I always, always have a great day to have you, despite your busy schedule. But let's first begin with the perspective that returned earnings have been excluded this time from the bank recapitalization templates. Uh, prior to now, I don't believe that was the case. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this is a wise uh, step, considering the fact that the provisions of IFRS rules on bank capital? Well, for me, I think uh, there's a misconception about uh, um, return earnings. Mm. I mean, on the part of the regulator, the central bank. Yeah. Right? Because um, in the first place, return earnings are part of profit made by a company uh, that the company's shareholders may have demanded that they should be paid to them as dividend. The private institutions that see invest reinvestment opportunity will rather than not take those monies out and they will keep them in the business. And that's how the business grows. And that's how some of the banks have grown from what they were in 2004 to what they are today. Mm. So uh, if you exclude return earnings, you've done two things. One, you've actually said that there's no time value of money. That a one naira in 2004 is equal to one naira today, mm. even when the one naira is invested. Mm. So uh, that means the, the benefit for those who have invested and have remained prudent and have managed their business well and retained, made profit and retained the profit. There's no difference between them and the person who starts to invest today. So anybody who invested one naira in 2004, you are telling him a person who brings one naira today is of equal standing with him. Mm. That is absolutely uh, not correct. Two, you also say that those who were prudent and generated profit and then retained the profit have not created value. Mm. That they are at the same level with those who uh, did, either did not make profit or, did or decided value. to uh, uh, distribute all the profit they made. <laughs> You're also saying they are in the same position. Yeah. And, and as I said, there is clearly a misconception on the part of Central Bank to have ever considered that returning earnings are not important and be excluded in calculating a, a bank shareholder's funds. Mm. Remember that even in this, uh, when a company makes profit, particular banks, the central bank requires banks to keep part of that fund in statutory reserve. So what that means, that statutory reserve is also, the central bank is also saying it's not necessary, it's, it's useless. Uh, in terms of asset of the buffer, acting as a reinvestment assets for the company. And I, I really can't relate with how they came about that. But clearly, there is uh, a misconception of how uh, earnings are generated and what value they have. And like I said, if they stick to this, it simply means they have rubbished the concept of time value of money. They have rubbished the concept of prudence. They have rubbished the concept of effective business management. Hmm. So it's very important that from what you've said, the central bank, because we have two year, a two year window, they still have the opportunity to go back and look at this whole uh, developments in this uh, I think phase. they don't need to wait for two years, two years will there something? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that it's a two-year window. So within the early stage, it's an opportunity to go they, back. They, they need to make a judgment call that look, yes. the position mm -hmm. is strong. Mm -hmm. uh, it will not incentivize genuine business to invest in the banking industry. Because the first thing a genuine businessman will say is look, if I invest in a company that is prudently managed and the company makes profit, the appropriate thing is to retain that profit. So I don't go about looking for money all the time. Yeah. So if I retain those monies and somebody comes to me and says, look, the amount you retain is not, is not relevant. And a, a third party has to come and buy into my company at the same price I bought into the company, I, I had to forego my present consumption for future consumption, which is wh what you call, why you talk of prudence, what you call of savings. Yeah. And if you are saying that saving is no longer important in bank, banking, then it's a problem. Mm. You actually say the the wrong culture of consumption to say that banks should declare hundred percent of their dividend of, of their earnings and net income as dividend. 
knowing fully where that when they just need to recapitalize. Uh, and they're going to have big, weak banks, mm. very weak banks. So I think uh, it's something they need to quickly reverse themselves. There's honor in accepting a mistake and collecting it. Very well said, Mr. Johnson Chuku. Now, looking at this uh, exercise, it's going to be two years. Uh, what do you consider to be the major pain and gains of this bank recapitalization exercise? I know it may seem very early, but you've been in the industry for decades. You've seen what happened in 2004, 2005, how we moved from over 80 banks to 24, and now currently we're at 25, 26 commercial banks. Okay, let me start from the gains so that it won't be like us in dismissing the <laughs> yes. banking cap industry yeah. capital recapitalization. Yes. In yeah. the first place, we've seen a shift in the price level uh, as a result of the depreciation of the local currency over time. And um, in, beyond that, the recent depreciation we saw in the local currency as a result of the um, uh, removal of petroleum subsidy has led to uh, a situation where transactions value or ticket, ticket values of loans in Nigeria has skyrocketed mm. beyond what they used to be. So that would have affected the bank's operating capital uh, in the sense that they can no longer afford to service the same number of customers' credit that you used to service, the same number, because the values of each of these credits have gone up. So there is, they became a compelling for some banks to raise their operating capital, to be able to do the same value, uh, or number of tickets, or value of effectively the same value of transactions they were doing before. That's one factor we must regret. So there's, there's a, clearly a need for improvements in operating capital. That could come in form of uh, businesses that induce themselves to raise additional capital, which some banks were already doing, mm. uh, even before uh, the stipulated new capital was announced. Or uh, they have to look for some inorganic form of growth, so, uh, inorganic growth uh, channels like medicine acquisition to improve their capacity to still the same value of business. Yeah. So clearly, there was a, an operating capital shortfall. And remember that the banks have what they call single obligor limit. So if ticket size had gone up significantly, it then means that some of the transactions that we are doing will now breach the single obligor limit without additional capital. Um, so the capacity became constrained. So there was a need to increase capital. But the only objection I have is the capital increase must recognize the prudence of banks that have made good profit over time and have retained those profits in their business for expansion purposes. Mm -hmm. The central bank can actually come and say, look, the uh, exchange gain made in 2023 should be excluded. If the central bank is sufficiently convinced that Naira will go back to 400 Naira uh, to a dollar, then they can ask the banks to exclude last year's uh, exchange gain. Um, but the, if you really push that logic, you run into another difficulty with the central bank because the, most of the banks reported massive exchanges because of the currency swap they did with the central bank. So if the <laughs> central bank should liquidate those currency swap, mm. the banks will exit their dollar positions and lock in those profits, mm. uh, exchange profits. But that's a, a different a topic. Yeah, back, for a, a different topic. Then in terms of the benefit to the economy, um, of course, if the banks have larger capital, they'll be able to do larger volume of transactions. They've been positioned to fund effectively um, the needs of the economy. But remember what matters is not just the capital the bank carries, it's the size of its liabilities. Mm -hmm. Some banks are already talking of a total asset base of $4 trillion. Yeah. So that's their capacity to generate new business. It's not just dependent on their share capital. The share capital is important in terms of risk management, in terms of uh, ensuring that in the event of any difficulty, the bank has enough buffer uh, to meet obligations to the depositors. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's in terms of benefit. In terms of risk, should the setup and stick to the current guideline, you may see some level of consolidation in the industry that will lead to uh, oligopolistic market environment. Mm -hmm. And when you have oligopolistic market environment, you're going to stifle, stifle competition, you're going to stifle innovation, and then um, even um, the benefit we are, have enjoyed in the Nigerian market industry is one of the most advanced in terms of payment platforms or payment system may over time be eroded. Yeah. Uh, so you don't want that. And then the, third, the second fact, another fact we have to consider is that look, given the pronouncement that the impact on uh, these uh, businesses, I mean uh, investors, 
many investors may think investing further in the banking industry will not be worth its while mm. if the bank's return earnings do not count as part of their wealth. Mm. Uh -huh. So you may not be able to attract genuine uh, investors. So if you don't attract genuine investors, you'll be left with attracting uh, investors whose ethical values are questionable. Mm. Does this explain, therefore, the concerns which some people have argued that it could hurt domestic investors uh, as a result of falling short-term earnings per share and other related uh, prices in, in the market? Do you agree with that? Well, if a, a bank or any company carries excessive cap excess capital, uh, certainly, uh, and uh, that capital, there are no deal pipelines. This is a pipeline that they can deploy that capital. Then you're going to see suboptimization of uh, investors' wealth because the company will not be able to generate uh, enough return on that capital that is commensurate with what they could have generated in order if the money had been invested elsewhere. Um, so the key thing is that, do you really have, uh, there are opportunities that I mentioned earlier because of the mm. shift in Naira value. Yes. Uh, but the questions are, uh, if you really ask, carry excessive capital and there are no new opportunities in the economy, it will take lead to unnecessary taking the banks will begin to lend to suboptimal, uh, suboptimal risk sectors, and that could lead to increase in number of main loans and erosion of shareholders for uh, wealth. Well, I mean, you just talked about lending to suboptimal sectors, and some experts even believe that this should position the banks who to fund or um, finance large-scale infrastructure projects in the country from rail power to other aspects. But you also have that connection between banking and the capital market will still come to that. But do you think another way would have been uh, preferred for the recapitalization of the banks, considering that all of them, except the tier three institutions, met their statutory capital adequacy requirements? Do you think there would have been another way to this? You know, uh, like I did say earlier that um, the key thing for me is the operating capital. That's the most important thing. The operating capital will include your uh, single obligor limit, uh -huh. Uh, which the operating capital will tell you, look, because my t t the ticket size of my transactions are such that my current shareholders fund will not support the single obligor demand of my customers. Either you have a need to to do that. Uh, with the reasons why you have things like Basel III, uh, are because they want capitalization of banks to be market driven mm -hmm. uh, and not just regulatory induced. I've talked about the challenge with of regulatory induced. Uh, capital equipment, which could lead to overcapitalization. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have, a, which is why you talk of risk weighted assets uh, and capital adequacy ratio. So when you look at capital adequacy, it tell you whether you need additional capital. And um, if you need additional capital, you will know that it will become a limiting factor to your business if you do not drive for that. So mm -hmm. I, I think the, the uh, center bank should focus more on risk based supervision, mm -hmm. uh, ensuring that banks are carrying adequate capital to meet their operating needs. Um, uh, which also one of the reasons why maybe they tier the, the, the capital requirements into international banks, local banks, regional banks. Uh, but the key thing is that if a bank already has enough capital, you do not need to compare them to international capital. I can also relate with the fact, I can relate with the fact that Central Bank is looking at local banks having as much as 200, uh, yeah. uh, 200 billion naira. For their national, yeah, uh, national, uh, bank, uh, national banks. National mm banks. -hmm. There is regional banks about mm -hmm. 50 billion Isn't and uh, international banks about uh, 500, 500 billion. billion. If you just cast your mind back to what. So, what the Central Bank has done is reset the minimum capital requirement to what the, the Central Bank pronounced in 2004. Mm. If you Cast your mind back, 25 billion naira then was equivalent to about 200 uh, million dollars. <laughs> and that's exactly where we're going back to, between yeah. 180 and 200 million dollars. Mm. Uh, the same 200 billion would be between 180 and 200 million dollars. So what they are doing in reset to what it was. But if a bank had been operating and be making good profit mm. and been retaining it and had achieved that, you don't need to compel them to go and raise fresh capital. Mm. It is a business that will demand them to raise fresh capital. Mm. The operating business, which I know some banks like Fidelity Bank, First Bank, they all felt that the business needs of their customers required them to carry additional capital. And they went to the market to raise additional capital. So the mm. only con 
challenge I have with the new capitalization requirement is you have to retain, recognize savings made by shareholders and retain the business for the investment purposes. But that's that's the same view of the uh, uh, Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise. Depositors funds, uh, they must be considered. But uh, Mr. Johnson Chuku, you just mentioned Basel Three requirement, and there are several people in the country that are concerned. Why should we be concerned about the whole Basel Three requirement and all that when we have our own prevailing economic challenges? Uh, for example, high inflation, headline inflation is 31.7%. Uh, GDP growth is still uh, around that uh, level of 3.4, 3.5. And then productivity remains a challenge, which you always, always raise, that we still have that challenge of being a productive economy. Okay, you know, the Basel three issue was not a critical issue until this recapitulation issue came about. And because part of the stipulation seemed to breach the Basel II uh, three uh, rules. Uh, so the question, it became very pungent. We would ask, why are we debating from international best practice? Uh, you want the community, country to move towards international best practice. Uh, like I said, what matters to you, what matters to every bank should be, do you have the operating capital to meet your business needs? Uh, that's number one item, which will factor in the rate of inflation, the devaluation of the local currency. Uh, the economic growth rate, uh, the economic opportunities within your space, and the deals, the deals pipeline that you are witnessing. So once you deal with operating ca uh, capital, you will address all the issues related with your, within your uh, operating environment. Mm. And Mr. Johnson, as we wrap up, um, there is a debate. It is believed that the banks can provide support capital. But if you want to drive a $1 trillion economy, the capital market should be the engine. Uh, what is your view? Because part of the philosophy around this uh, was that the banks can be strong enough to support the $1 trillion GDP size audacious ambition of this administration. Well, I was at a function where the speaker said uh, there's nothing, nothing wrong with being ambitious. If you want to, uh, if you can aim for the moon and probably you will hit the roof. Uh, the issue of um, having a $1 trillion economy in six years for me, it's uh, a statement of a uh, good, uh, uh, lofty idea. Uh, there's nothing wrong with dreaming, uh, but you have to differentiate between dream and vision. Mm -hmm. uh, a dream, it's uh, a feel good uh, imagination, uh, thought process. A vision is a clear, well thought through strategic target. But back to the issues mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about. Um, the banks and the capital market pre, uh, provide slightly different functions that relates to fund, providing funding in the economy. The capital market provides long-term funds and also provides a vehicle for trading or for liquidification of long-term assets to make those long-term uh, uh, instruments attractive for investors. And that's what the capital market does. It, present, it provides a primary market for issuers of long-term instruments. It also provides a secondary market for people to trade on their long-term instruments so that it makes those long-term instruments that are attractive for people to invest because you don't want to invest in instruments that will not match on the, the end of your life. So that, that the banking industry provides short-term funding needs, uh, operating cash flow needs of businesses. Um, the banking industry do not create the economy. It's the economic demand that the banking industry funds. Uh, a bank cannot come to me and say, Johnson, Chuku, because we have uh, one trillion naira, come and take money. I would be the one to go to the bank and say, look, I have this idea, I have this vision, this idea, what I have put together, and I need funding. Uh, and then if that funding is short time in nature, that's when I go to the bank. If it's long time in nature, I have to approach the capital market. Um, so it is not, it is the demands of the economy that will drive the fund providers to provide the funds, which is why I keep emphasizing on operating operating uh, capital. capital. And as I said, like once you focus on operating capital, we have captured every excess and dynamics of funding requirement within the banking for the banking industry. Um, so that that's what we have to bear in mind. It's uh, even if you provide the funding and there are no deals in the pipeline, the banks will only be sub optimizing carrying excessive capital 
it is not the fund that you provided the banking industry that will make uh, the opportunities there. It will not provide the power sector, uh, stabilize the power sector, unless the private sector becomes fun, uh, fungible, mm -hmm. uh, and then mm -hmm. people will not take the risk of giving the money to that sector operator. It will not build the roads unless the roads come up, become commercially viable, mm -hmm. and the uh, investors go to the bank and say, look, I can build this highway, I can recover the money in five years, mm -hmm. and this is the, the tariff rate that I will charge, or the tool that I will charge on it, this is what I get from my right of way, and then the banks will provide the funding for it. Uh, so that's what we have to, we, have to, we, we shouldn't uh, be confused with the concept that once the banks capitalize, um, they will just begin to throw the money to Dick Tom and Harry, and then the economy will just boom, mm. become a, a one trillion economy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson Chuku, good managing director, career asset management for this very fresh insight into the broader perspective of the recapitalization exercise 2024 2020 to 2026 and how it impacts our economy. Thank you once again. At least it's very clear that operating capital is key for yeah. the banks. Uh, Central Bank should review its uh, return earnings um, order or statement. And also, most importantly, we need to engineer financing in a much sustainable way. Thank you very much. And to our viewers, it's been a very interesting conversation looking at the broader perspective on recapitalization, the Nigerian banking industry and how it's going to impact the economy. You can follow our website, displayed on the screen to get further insights on this conversation and our social media platforms also. Thank you for being part of this show. And of course, till we come your way again, I'm Otoba Sebasekon. Thank you for watching and bye for now.